All right, something that our users really want to know is if we repair one of these ECMs and then it gets sent into HP Tuners to uh, unlock or upgrade the ECM, would it be covered underneath the HP Tuner warranty? And the answer is yes. Uh, we spent a lot of time with HP Tuners sending them prototype ECMs and then working with them to make sure that our repair doesn't affect the integrity of the ECM. So what we end up having is an ECM that you can send in um, that we've repaired and if the ECM were to ever have an issue down the road um, bricked or some internal failure or otherwise that uh, HP tuners would warranty and cover their uh, the ECM during the normal process. Uh, if you look on their site right now um, you'll see that they don't accept any ECMs with broken tabs or anything so if you send this in it will be backed by the same exact warranty internally at HP tuners as if you were sending them a brand new ECM. And like I said, that is something that we really wanted to strive to do to get some of these ECMs back in the marketplace that would be backed by HP Tuner's warranty for the internal repair and then backed by our warranty for the connector repair for the life of the ECM and the normal usage. I want to talk a little bit about our E41 or L5P ECM repair. We've got a ton of questions on this, what the process is, who needs it, what is it for. So uh, right here, uh, these are some E41s that we have in, in our stockpile. These have all been repaired. Um, at one point in time, they look like this. And what happens is the customer or whoever replaces this ECM do, during an ECM exchange process, they end up breaking some of the connectors off. And they're pretty easy to break. Uh, they are pretty fragile thermoplastic um, from General Motors. They just weren't that tough and they're in a pretty tight location. So here's some examples of ECMs. This customer, whoever pulled this one out, it broke this uh, connector all the way off. HP tuners, or really nobody's going to unlock this um, and think that this is a good ECM. So uh, this is an example of one bad one. Um, here's an example of what we see pretty commonly. Uh, Again, same ECM, E41, uh, a couple of these tabs are broken off here. And these tabs are used by the factory harness to keep the connector bonded down onto the pins so the ECM can retain its connectivity during normal vehicle operation. So this one's broke. Uh, again, the connector would, with no tabs on the front, would, during uh, vibration and normal operation of the motor, it would flex off and possibly unseat these. Uh, connectors and you have a lot of stuff in here can high can low power grounds multiple powers and grounds in each one of these connectors So that's another example of what we see and this is an example of what we see that we can't fix um, this ECM Again, it's been there's a couple there's an ear that's broke off here and Over here this piece of plastic's been broke off. However, this center divider plate is is broke somebody dropped it on something or you know who who knows what happened so that's an example of something that we we won't fix we won't fix the center divider plate so if you uh, have an ECM that has a broken connector even if it's just one little broken tab on one uh, ECM connector we take the um, ECM we mill off every single uh, plastic and then cut a chamfer groove into this ECM and we replace every one of these connectors, even if one tab on one ECM is broke um, with new billet anodized aluminum. And these are uh, examples of some of our repairs. So this is, again, a ECM that at one point in time was broke. We replaced it with um, bonded aluminum that's been anodized. So it is super solid. Um, it's not going to be brittle like the plastic and literally you can stand on these and it's not going to break. We put security screws in here to make sure that they're bonded down, but they're pressure tested. Um, they have a special bonding agent to bond the build aluminum down to the plastic with a chamfer groove to keep any moisture or water out so the rubber seal can actually do its job. And the CCM will stand the test of time. And again, this is just a normal uh, ECM that came in, broke, and we did the repair process. We submitted the ECM connector repair to the U.S. Patent Office because the connector design is substantially different than the GM connector design. So we wanted to protect just the repair process and the connector itself 
uh, to make sure the integrity of this repair is good. Um, before we repair an ECM, it's super important. We, we tune tons of L5Ps, E41s, I mean all over. And the ECM, sometimes they don't have connectivity. So we don't know if HP Tuner has unlocked the ECM. We don't know if it's a, a PowerTech or Holly ECM. We don't know if it's a factory ECM. We, we may know, but we don't 100% know. So what we do is we uh, test the ECM using GM, GMPDI2 interface tool on the bench to make sure that the ECM, before we touch it, will boot up. So ECM gets shipped into us. We verify connectivity on the bench, verify that can high and can low communicate directly with the ECM and that the ECM is a good functioning and working ECM. If there's a question about this, we'll pop this ECM into one of our test trucks to make sure that it does in fact boot up. So that's called the as found condition. Um, after it's good, then we will run it through a process to re do the connector repair process. And then when it's finished, uh, this ECM will go undergo the same test to make sure that because it's an extremely sensitive repair, it's really close to the ECM circuit board, we want to make sure that we didn't destroy or disturb the ECM. So we do what's called an as left test to make sure that the ECM is uh, still has good connectivity when we're completed with the process. And then when that's done, then we'll, we have two QC sign-offs on these ECMs and we'll send this guy out uh, back to the customer. Um, and that's it kind of in a nutshell how the ECM process uh, is repaired. So again, the ECM comes into us after you've checked out, uh, gets shipped to us. We tag the ECM uh, with the ECM serial number um, that you guys would have used to check out online. Uh, the ECM gets tagged the entire time to make sure that the ECM that you send to us is the ECM that gets repaired and sent back. Um, the reason that's important is we don't know if you've had the ECM previously unlocked. We also don't know if, if it was an ECM for a customer, right? So we're not going to send you out some other ECM, we're going to send you out your ECM. Uh, so it's super important. There'll be two QC sign-offs to make sure that um, to people have independently looked to make sure that this repair was completed properly. And then if that's all good, then we'll bag it off and send it to you. Uh, things that we won't do, um, and this is a disclaimer that's right on our website. Um, so we test your ECM, make sure it's good, we remove the connectors, we hydroponically bond three built aluminum connectors back to the ECM, we retest your ECM for connectivity. If steps one through four are done uh, properly then we'll tag your ECM and then ship it back off to you. Uh, it's important that we tag the ECM because we lifetime warranty these connectors for uh, destruction from normal install and removal process which we'll cover here in just a second. Uh, but what we're not going to do is repair an ECM that is a sustained impact damage to the front of the back of the case. So we understand E41 has a couple micros in here that are pretty sensitive. If this has been dented or damaged, or we have questions on ECM boot up, we're gonna send this back to you because we don't wanna repair something that could possibly be junk and spend your money. Um, we're not gonna repair an ECM connector with a center divider plate. So again, we have literally hundreds of these ECMs on site um, that are ours in our inventory and we see what happens. This is an example of ECM center plate is broke uh, while we could fix this, we're just not going to fix it. It's a super sensitive repair between ECM pins and we don't want to run the risk of damage. So we're just not going to repair that. So if you find yourself sending an ECM in with that damage, uh, stop because we're not going to repair it. Um, we're also not going to repair an ECM that has um, bent pins. And unfortunately, I don't have an example in here. I could mash some pins to show you. But if an ECM pin or multiple pins have been smashed or laid over, um, an example would be maybe the ECM was removed and then something got dropped down into the internals. Don't try to straighten those um, and send them in to us. We'll, we do look for that. Um, it's just probably not a safe condition to be repairing something like that. So uh, again, if ECM pins are bent, uh, we're not, we'll stop and we won't repair it. We'll send it back to you. Um, and that's kind of the repair process in a nutshell. Again, this is intended to be a lifetime repair for these things to hopefully alleviate the shortage of the E41 ECMs in the industry and try to get maybe some of the ECMs back in circulation. So I do want to talk really quick about ECM removal. This isn't going to be an ECM removal discussion because we already have those videos. 
but I'm going to show if, if Brady can show down under this truck kind of what happens on ECM removal. So there's a 2017 and 19 L5P. Uh, nothing special about this truck. And I thank John Hinton for letting us borrow it. But down uh, here is where the E41 is located on the 17 and 19 trucks. And it's kind of a, a pain because you have a power steering pump here, you have a coolant um, line here, you have the transmission uh, T87A harness that runs across here. So we understand the fact that this is kind of a tight situation in here. The ECM is pretty tight. What well, what happens a lot? This connect this connector is super sensitive. Is people you know reach down here, pull the safety lock off, and literally use their thumb and leverage and just push the connector off the uh, ECM, which shears those plastic tabs off the ECM. So what we recommend is following GM's uh, removal and install process. Take the if you can come around here, Brady, and show them from here. If you could just uh, take the the T87A out of its harness, pull these two grommets out and lay the T87A back here so it's completely out of the way and this wire looms out of the way. And then what we do is pull the, the radiator hose out of the way and hold it out of the way and then reach down here and pull the safety tabs off the ECM. Uh, there is one bolt that holds the ECM down but pull the safety tabs off and then, and I can show you on this ECM here that we have our bench connections down on. What you should do is, again, the manuals are going to explain this, but once the safety tab has been pushed off, push this tab down and then use your other hand to pull up on the connector as you push the gray safety lock off. That way you don't put so much pressure on these pins and break them off. Because although we don't mind repairing ECMs, we prefer that the ECMs don't get broke so we don't have to fix them. So that'll help alleviate the pressure on on this uh, these tabs and keep in mind these can be broke the CCM is already broke but if you look at how flexible this is this stuff is extremely fragile and thermal plastic or any plastic that is made by bonding uh, plastic under hot conditions it uh, has a, a lot of brittle fracture over over time so as time goes on these will get more brittle and that's just the way that it is. And if you look at one of the ECMs that we've repaired, you can't bend, I mean, this is, this is tough. You, there's just no way to bend this in. These are super tough. So um, again, built aluminum is not gonna bend, but you can break the plastic in here, these plastic safety tabs. So again, just because you have one of our ECMs in here doesn't mean you should just rip this connector off because it will break your harness and then you have to put new slides in it. So that's it in a nutshell, how the ECM repair procedure goes. I hope that everybody finds this uh, interesting and maybe if you guys have broken ECMs, you could send them in to us and we could, we'll expeditiously get them turned around because we understand people need ECMs. So that's all we got.